Nobody saw this coming. SMIC, the Chinese semiconductor company once seen as a casualty of U.S. tech sanctions, has just unveiled a working 2 nanometer chip prototype. Let that sink in. This is not a design blueprint, not a stage concept. It's a functioning chip reportedly tested and preparing for production. And it comes from a company that wasn't even supposed to survive at the cutting edge. Just a few years ago, SMIC was blacklisted by the U.S., denied access to the world's most advanced manufacturing tools, and widely expected to fall behind. Today, it's the first in China, and possibly in the entire non-Western world, to produce a working chip on the 2 nanometers node. And this isn't just a technological achievement. It's a geopolitical bombshell. To understand why this matters, we have to start with the basics. In semiconductor engineering, 2 nanometers refers to the scale of transistors, the fundamental units of logic on a chip. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. The smaller the transistor, the more you can pack onto a chip. And the more transistors, the faster and more efficient that chip becomes. Back in 2010, 45 nanometers chips were considered state of the art. Today, we're looking at circuits so small that over 100 million of them could fit on a grain of rice. This is a Moore's law. It's Moore's shock. Apple's M3 chip, built by TSMC, uses a 3 nanometers process. It's incredibly powerful and energy efficient, powering high-end MacBooks and iPhones. But SMIC, under sanctions and without access to EUV technology, has just gone a full step smaller. That's the equivalent of winning a Formula One race without access to the car's engine. And yet they did it. What makes this especially shocking is the manufacturing technique. To make chips at or below 5 nanometers, the global standard is extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV. These machines, produced exclusively by ASML in the Netherlands, cost over $150 million each and require precision engineering down to the atomic level. The U.S. has successfully blocked the sale of these machines to SMIC since 2019, pressuring ASML and the Dutch government into compliance. Most experts believed EUV was indispensable for 2 nanometers chips, but SMIC proved otherwise. Instead, they used DUV, deep ultraviolet lithography, an older technology. Paired with a technique known as quadruple patterning, SMIC was able to simulate the precision of EUV using multiple laser passes. It's slower, more error-prone, and dramatically more expensive per chip, but works. This is like constructing a cathedral with hand tools instead of machines, and still finishing it before your rival. The result is a breakthrough that defies every Western expectation. And SMIC didn't do it alone. Huawei, China's embattled tech giant, has been heavily involved. After being cut off from Qualcomm and ARM in 2020, Huawei accelerated its chip research under its subsidiary High Silicon. It redirected billions into talent acquisition, academic partnerships, and EDA tools. When Huawei's Mate 60 Pro was released in 2023, teardown analysis by Tech Insights confirmed it ran on a 7 nanometers chip fabricated by SMIC. That chip was produced under sanctions, and it was a warning shot. The 2 nanometers prototype is the full-blown offensive. Huawei and SMIC appear to be working in tandem. Huawei drives chip design and application requirements. SMIC figures out how to build them. Together, they're forming a vertically integrated alternative to the Western tech stack, from silicon to systems. And they're doing it fast. China's long-term strategy is technological self-reliance. That's not a slogan. It's written in a national policy documents like Made in China 2025 and the 14th Five-Year Plan. Tens of billions of dollars have been allocated to build a domestic semiconductor ecosystem, complete with its own tooling, wafers, EDA software, and even training programs for next-generation engineers. By 2024, China had already built over 30 state-backed wafer fabs. Semiconductor equipment makers like AMEC and Nora are ramping up domestic alternatives to ASML, and Tokyo Electron. Companies like Empyrean are trying to replace Synopsys and Cadence in EDA tools. The ecosystem isn't complete, but it's evolving. Fast. And here's the geopolitical rub. The United States has spent the last five years trying to freeze China's chip ambitions. Export controls, entity lists, tech alliances, foreign pressure campaigns. 
Over $52 billion has been committed under the Chips and Science Act to revitalize U.S. chip manufacturing. Yet despite all this, SMIC, under full-spectrum sanctions, has just hit a milestone that Intel and global foundries still haven't delivered at scale. Intel's own 2 nanometers process, known as Intel 20A, is scheduled for late 2025. But repeated delays on its 7 nanometers and 4 nanometers nodes have investors nervous. TSMC plans to ramp up its 2 nanometers process in 2025, with pilot lines already in place in Shinshu and Arizona. But SMIC? They're already showing working silicon. The response from Washington has been muted. No press briefings. No official statements. Just silence. That silence is revealing. Because if the world's most heavily sanctioned chip maker can leapfrog into 2 nanometers territory, what else is possible? What happens when China starts selling 2 nanometers chips into Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America? Regions less influenced by U.S. policy and more focused on affordability. Consider this. TSMC manufactures a 2 nanometers chip for Apple. Retail cost? Over $120 per SOC. If SMIC can produce a comparable chip, even at 70% efficiency, for $60 or less, the competitive landscape could shift overnight. You'd have Chinese smartphones offering flagship tier performance at mid-range prices. That's devastating for Qualcomm, MediaTek, and even Samsung. It gets worse. China's ambitions go beyond phones. AI is the next frontier. Training models like GPT-4 requires chips that can process billions of parameters per second. Right now, NVIDIA dominates that space with its H100 chips, each of which sells for $25,000 to $40,000. These chips rely on TSMC's 5 nanometers and 4 nanometers processes. But what if SMIC starts building AI accelerators on its 2 nanometers node? Even if they aren't as fast as H100S, they'll be cheaper. And when you're training at scale, cost per what often beats raw performance. Already, Huawei's Ascend series of AI chips are seeing adoption in Chinese data centers. A homegrown 2 nanometers version could launch China's own chat GPT equivalents and do so outside the reach of U.S. export laws. This isn't just disruption, it's decoupling. Global tech is fracturing into two ecosystems, one U.S.-led, tied to ASML, TSMC, and Intel. The other China-led, centered around SMIC, Huawei, and new domestic supply chains. And then there's Taiwan. TSMC is not just a chip maker, it's a geopolitical asset. U.S. lawmakers have called it the Silicon Shield. The assumption was that as long as TSMC is essential to global supply chains, no one would risk destabilizing Taiwan. But if China no longer needs TSMC, that shield starts to crack. Already, TSMC is facing U.S. pressure. In 2024, it was fined for alleged indirect exports to blacklisted Chinese firms. It's also being asked to shift manufacturing to Arizona, a move that raises costs and fragments its engineering base. If SMIC proves it can match or surpass TSMC's core technology, Taiwan's leverage diminishes. And with it, the geopolitical calculus in the region changes dramatically. Of course, challenges remain. SMIC's yield rate is still low. Production is inefficient. Power consumption may be higher than optimized Western equivalents. And without EUV, scaling up will be slow. But here's the thing. China has time, money, and motivation. Beijing views chips as national security infrastructure. That means SMIC isn't just competing with Intel. It's backed by a nation determined to win. Already, China is pouring $40 billion into its third national semiconductor fund. State banks are offering favorable loans. Local governments are offering free land, tax breaks, and talent programs. This isn't a free market. It's an industrial campaign. And if history is any guide, when China decides to dominate an industry, it usually does. We saw it in solar panels. We saw it in high-speed rail. Now it's semiconductors. So what happens next? Will Washington tighten sanctions further? Ban DUV machines altogether? Go after third-party chip testers in Malaysia and Thailand? Or will the U.S. try a different strategy? One based on cooperation, competitiveness, and internal revitalization. The chip war is no longer about preventing China from catching up. It's about preventing the U.S. from falling behind. 
and SMIX-2 nanometers prototype, it's a loud, unapologetic signal that the race is already entering a new phase. This isn't the end. It's the inflection point. The moment when the global semiconductor order begins to shift. Not through warfare or treaties, but through engineering. Who controls the chips controls the data. Who controls the data controls the future. And right now, that future is being rewritten in Shanghai, not Silicon Valley.